It was a truly bizarre way to end the Premier League season, but despite no silverware lifted on the final day, it still ended in success. Watford crowned Premier League champions after their 3-1 victory at Turf Moor against Burnley. I won player of the month as well for leading us to the crown. And as we now head into the final game of the season, it is the FA Cup final as we take on Chelsea here at Wembley, going in search of a memorable domestic double. It is the big day in the Emirates FA Cup season. It is the final, of course. Two terrific teams about to go head to head. The Premier League is enough to make this season a magical one for the Hornets, but this FA Cup final is a chance to avenge ourselves. Last season reaching the final before losing to Arsenal by two goals to nil here at Wembley, now it's a chance to pick this trophy up and put it in our trophy cabinet as well, and we won't be settling for a runners-up medal for the second straight season. Chelsea will be no easy match, they finished in third place in the Premier League and we know that despite our Premier League win this season they'll probably still be considered favourites, however we're desperate to make sure that for the second straight season we don't end up as the losers. Obviously winning the Premier League was a fantastic achievement but the FA Cup will make the season even sweeter and since this may well be my final appearance for the Hornets as well, heading into the summer transfer window, I'd love to leave the fans with something special to remember in perhaps my last game wearing the yellow shirt. But also I will say real briefly as the game's about to get underway, uh, this episode is a full post commentary because unfortunately I did record a live commentary for it but it was all just static, I don't know what happened, I checked the mic before I start recording and it was totally fine but for some reason it was just all static, really loud, just really really high pitched and for some reason my voice just didn't get translated so apologies for that. But hopefully you enjoyed the game regardless. But the first half, there was not much to enjoy. There was very little going on in a really drab first 45 minutes. And as the second half got underway, six minutes after the restart, we had our first chance here, courtesy of myself. But the shot was blocked by Rüdiger and turned behind for a corner. And this passage of play right here sort of summed the game up. We were having shots, we were getting attacks, we were looking the better team. But every single time we took aim, it seemed like the shot was always blocked, charged down before it was anything meaningful. And we just couldn't find a clear path to goal. But 68 minutes in after I rolled back a Yoko, we did have a golden chance here. As I kept on going, my cell would heal to heel flick, took it around Kurt Zuma, found some space, did get a shot away, but Courtois made the save, and sadly Bellarabi could not turn in the rebound as he turned the half volley over the bar. And in the game where we had played better, Chelsea had very few chances. One fell here to Gareth Bale as the Welshman fired this shot over the bar from 25 yards. And with two minutes to go, one of our best chances fell here. A quick chance for a break with one minute of normal time remaining. Andre Gray off the bench latched onto it. And whilst he did score in the final day, he couldn't hit the target here and Chelsea escaped. That meant we went into extra time for the second straight FA Cup final where last year, of course, we surrendered those two goals to Arsenal as they went on to win the trophy. So this year, as we went into the dressing room, we knew that this time, we simply couldn't let it happen again. As extra time arrived, there were very few chances in the first half until right at the end when I rolled the ball to Pereira who sadly hit the top of the crossbar as it was turned behind for a goal kick and we were still deadlocked at 0-0 and the final chance fell with just three minutes to go. Chelsea pushing bodies forward here looking for a late winner. Alvaro Morata found space to shoot but sadly for Chelsea could not hit the target as we were still tied with two minutes remaining and the game was poised and set up for someone to be a hero and for someone to be a late winner for their team. And the chance fell to us for a minute to go. Andre Gray found Bellarabi. Bellarabi found Conti into my feet. A wonderful build-up freed Richard Leeson. But Courtois, who was in fine form for the entire game, made a miraculous save on the one-on-one -on -one to prevent Watford from claiming the FA Cup and sending the game into a penalty shootout. Our final chance fell direct from the throw. Bellarabi whipped in a cross. Conti won the header, but it sailed over the bar. And that was that. Two hours worth of football at Wembley, but not a single goal scored, which meant that the FA Cup final will be separated from 12 yards in a penalty shootout. It was a great chance right at the end. Richard Leeson couldn't take advantage, and thus, despite having a great game, where well, we played very well, no goals did mean penalties would settle the sides and see who would end up claiming the FA Cup. The first penalty taken by Will Hughes against Courtois. I was super nervous heading into this. My reaction was pretty funny to be honest. Hughes slotted the first penalty away and we went a goal up. Van Ginkel would then take the next one for the Blues and the first one for Chelsea in the penalty shootout. But he ended up chipping the ball over the bar 
and that gave us a chance to go two goals up. Andre Gray, second highest scorer for the club this season, would take our second penalty, but unfortunately, like Van Ginkel, he failed to hit the back of the net as it clipped the outside of the post and went behind. And then Alvaro Morata had the chance to equalise for Chelsea, which he did, sending the goalkeeper the wrong way and making it 1-1. Pereira who hit the bar in extra time and a good chance to make it 2-1 here with our next penalty and he did right down the middle, confident from our number 37, which meant that Pedro had to score as the former Barcelona man stepped up from 12 yards and he did. Confident penalty right into the bottom corner and then it was my turn. I was absolutely bricking it standing up to take this one. I didn't want to take one. I was so nervous. I was shaking like crazy. But you wouldn't have thought so based on the penalty. Smashed it into the far corner, sending Courtois the wrong way. I was up for it, despite what I may have told you. And I made it 3-2. And as Bale then made it 3-3, sending the goalkeeper the wrong way, Richard Leeson then took the next one for us, as the Brazilian also converted with the coolest of penalties, stroking into the bottom corner, which meant that N'Golo Kante for Chelsea, the former Leicester midfielder, had to score. Otherwise, Watford were crowned FA Cup winners. The Frenchman stopped to take it, and the number seven put it wide of the post, and that was that. Watford survived the penalty shootout, win it in the spot kicks, and are crowned champions of the FA Cup as we win the domestic double. Two hours worth of football, no goal scored, but on the shootout we hold our nerve, and unlike last year, we learned from our mistakes. We were clinical from the 12-yard situations, we did what we needed to do, and unlike against Arsenal, we don't end up with a runners-up medal, leaving Wembley as losers. Instead, we avenge our demons, we get the win, we win the FA Cup, it's in the trophy cabinet, and it's safe to say my promise has been delivered. I told the fans I would stay, I told the fans I would lead this team, and I promised these fans a memorable season, and there's not much more memorable than a domestic double for Watford. The Hornets, Premier League winners, and FA Cup winners, what a way to end just my second season in professional football. Well, it is the most famous domestic club competition in the world, the oldest, still widely celebrated. And to go up to collect the FA Cup, Alan, you've done it. Yeah, it's a magnificent feeling, and these players, I think defensively, they owe those defenders a a big pat on the back because their success has been based on that. The FA Cup winners! moments these Alan sharing the joy on the field with those off it the fans they'll know where their particular friends and families are in the stadium yeah it's at this point really you don't want to leave the pitch you don't want these moments to end wonderful camaraderie between the lads what a moment for them You have to have the team photo and they're getting ready for it now yeah one of those lovely scenes that you'll hang on the wall back at home In perhaps my final two games in a Watford shirt, I have to be honest, I didn't really play that well. But I did what I need to do in this game, scoring a crucial penalty, helping us get the win on the shootout by four goals to three, as Watford lift the FA Cup as well as the Premier League too. It really has been a magical season for the Hornets. Not many people would have thought it possible come this start of the season. We maintain great character and great belief throughout, and even during our struggling patches, we were really really finding it difficult to pick up form we never stopped believing and that's what got us there in the end FA Cup winners Premier League winners and a fantastic second season for me individually too I hit all four of my manager objectives in the league and I had an incredible return in terms of my stats 16 goals and 22 assists in 37 Premier League games 8 goals and 2 assists in 11 Champions League games 2 assists in 2 Carabao Cup games and 3 goals and 4 assists in 6 FA Cup matches as well my attributes so we progressed to 89 rated as well, just 21 years old. I've now got five star skills, by the way. 
and it's been an incredible season for myself individually and for Watford as a team as I'm also now 61% complete in my overall progress with the accomplishments. But as for the sponsorships, as you can see, I've already hit Umbro, Puma and Under Armour as you guys were already aware, but also Adidas as well. I managed to get the Adidas sponsorship too after winning those two trophies right at the end of the season, which means that four of my five sponsorships have been achieved, which means if we were, head to, were to head back for a season three, I would start wearing the Under Armour boots, as so far I've only worn Umbro and Puma, and then switched to Adidas midway through the season. But whether we come back for a season three, I'm not entirely sure. I know a lot of people have lost interest in the save, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of interest lost in the series as well. I still really enjoy it. I love player career and I think it's really fun, but it might be a good idea to start something new as I haven't started a new project in quite some time. Now maybe I'll start something on the weekend as well. The only sponsorship I missed out on was Nike then. As you can see I'm not 90 plus overall, I haven't scored 40 goals, got 5 career trophies or played in the CL final but I did get 3 plus memorable moments and you might be wondering where that third memorable moment came from when I only had 2. Well actually it came with my 7th of the 10 on the list with that crucial penalty scored in our FA Cup final shootout as well. So 3 memorable moments picked up from 10, that's not a bad return, just 2 seasons in and what a memorable season it was. And also, you guys were wondering in the last episode where that Premier League trophy was, just like I was. Well, it turns out we had to go to London to get it. Because like in my Huddersfield say, we see the glitch here in the breaking news section. What for crowned FA Cup winners, but I'm sat next to the Premier League trophy. We had to go to Wembley to pick it up and the FA Cup as well. But what an incredible season for Watford. Domestic double winners. And if that does turn out to be the final season of the series as well, what a way to finish. But that will end today's episode of My Player though, guys, and the season as well. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy the episode, then please do drop a like as well. Once again, I apologise for the host commentary. I'll play you a bit of audio if you want and why I couldn't use it. But yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I had to do a post commentary for this one. But thanks for watching regardless. Hope you did enjoy it. Much love. Have a great evening. And I might see you for a new season of My Player very soon. If not, then I'll see you for the start of a new project beginning on Saturday morning.